So one of the projects that I have uh, going on in my lab right now is a project looking at the winter ecology uh, and really the round year ecology of Lake Superior. Uh, it's a project that has been funded by Sea Grant uh, that we've started working on uh, past year. Uh, in addition to me, uh, there is a PhD student working on this project, Kirill Shapov, um, who's a, a student at the Large Lakes Observatory and UMD, and a number of undergraduates that uh, are helping us with our research. Limnologists or aquatic ecologists have traditionally tended to basically uh, pause the research in the winter, and um, as a consequence, we know very little about what lakes do in general in the winter, and large lakes like Lake Superior especially. So. But uh, with this specific project, we're looking mostly at, we're trying to get an idea of what the lake does physically, chemically, and also biologically in the winter, and also how conditions in summer or in fall affect the conditions in winter, and how things that happen in the winter uh, kind of uh, are reflected in what the lake does in spring and in summer. So we're collecting samples um, in the water column and also on the bottom of the lake. Uh, in the water column, we're collecting things like the phytoplankton, so the algae that support the food web of the water column. We're collecting zooplankton, uh, which is what eats algae and what is eaten by fish. Uh, we're looking at the species composition of the zooplankton because the kind of species that are present uh, has effect on how edible they are and how nutritious the zooplankton is uh, for fish resources, for example to see how abundant they are throughout the year and across these different stations, uh, and also how nutritious they are. So we're doing biochemical analysis on the tissues of the benthic invertebrates and the zooplankton and algae uh, to see how edible they are uh, throughout, the, throughout this year. So we're kind of combining estimates of their edibility or how nutritious they are with estimates of their abundance to see how the resources that are available to higher trophic levels, uh, such as fish, uh, change seasonally and at different locations. Basically what you'll do is you'll hit the average button once and that's going to average uh, the light conditions over about 8 seconds. Uh, just because light kind of varies the time. We're going to be providing some of the first data, really some of, really some of the first data about the seasonality of, of Lake Superior and other large lakes in North America, uh, which I think will partially uh, fill some of the questions that we have and also maybe um, point to future directions where research might be um, interesting to do to really understand what, um, what climate change will do. Throughout most of the year, the zooplankton communities are dominated by these cold-loving, really fatty, large uh, zooplankton species that are really, really nutritious to fish. Uh, but as lakes warm, the community of zooplankton in some cases shifts to species uh, like water fleas, uh, known as cladocerans, that, um, that are also uh, eaten by fish, but they tend to be a lot less nutritious. So, one thing that you might expect to see is this reduced nutritiousness uh, of the food base uh, for fish. I'm, I'm hoping that, at least with this, again, very early research, we're going to be able to know how the edibility of the things that live in the lake uh, and the relevance to the fisheries will change, uh, and maybe get an idea of how, because some of our sites are ice-covered, how some of our sites are not ice-covered, how this um, long-term loss of ice cover on Lake Superior will affect the food web and its, again, uh, the movement of energy to things that people really care about, like sports fish or um, commercially valuable fish species.